So talking about people's implicit biases. So let me, sorry, let me go off on a little random rant. Okay, so um, I kind of heard this book like 12 Rules Against Chaos by an um, author named uh, Jordan Peterson. I read a little bit of it. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, seems pretty good. But then, you know, I just, I, I kind of read it and I was like, eh, it's kind of not that interesting to me. So I might've read like half a chapter or something and just put it down and just moved on. I think I saw it in a bookstore or something. And subsequently, <laughs> so I'll, I'll tell you, tell you this is why I don't like using search engines anymore. So one random thought I had was, you know, I've been philosophizing a lot on like, you know, doing a critique on race and beyond the racial binary, some thoughts like that. And so I Googled, you know, oh, this is interesting. If you've never used DuckDuckGo.com, give it a go. It's like Google, except it uncovers more hidden stuff that Google often shadow bans or whatever. So I want Google, I open up two tabs, right? Now I use Safari. So I open up Google.com, then I open up DuckDuckGo.com, and I, same searching uh, query, I searched, are Jewish people white? Looked at both results, very interesting because Technically, Google is still the superior search engine. It actually is more like, accurate and good, but then Google tends to favor more like, kind of like news agencies or big publications, stuff like that. And my theory is because um, these corporations are more effective in using Google Ads and some monetizing. So Google is gonna be kind of giving them like a subtle boost. And DuckDuckGo is interesting because you uncover more like indie bloggers like individual bloggers and stuff like that and you know like and this is also something that i find very interesting is you know like i'm like a bay area liberal you know whatever but duckduckgo.com shows a lot more like right wing or conservative voices whereas google tends to favor more the the left-leaning uh, liberal media and you know dude come on it's so obvious right all the big tech companies we're all in california we're all a bunch of liberals, um, so Google, Amazon, Facebook, everyone is, is kind of like that. But anyways, so I Google, are Jewish people white? And you know, I read this interesting article that I found on DuckDuckGoogle.com. And it's actually kind of cool too, because I, I, I kind of um, found some more kind of like, um, kind of like Jewish organization websites, so these opinions are pretty good. And I just kind of go down this really bad rabbit hole. And there's like this fucking website, I guess it's like, and I heard about it through Nassim Taleb in one of his essays on Medium. It's like called Quillette or something like that. And, and then I, the, this is like kind of, I guess it's good and bad. It's like kind of I went down this random rabbit hole of, you know, finding this site called rationalwiki.com, which is kind of a, a, funny, a funny antidote to Wikipedia, which is obviously um, very biased in certain ways and problematic. Um, and so I'm like, I'm like reading it and stuff like that. And I, I came across Jordan Peterson for some reason. I'm like, wait, what? And then apparently like he's in the hospital cause he's like, he's hooked on some sort of like Benz something, you know, something. And then, and then I, I start reading this rational wiki article on Jordan Peterson. Essentially the skinny of it is this dude's kind of like, kind of a, maybe just feels a little bit like disingenuous, maybe is my, my gist or uh, I don't know. So, you know, if one reads his book, right? Like, you know, it's like, oh, okay, sounds smart. Like professor at Toronto School of something for psychology, whatever. So he's definitely got the credentials. So most people won't really do their homework and figure out who this guy really is. And then, you know, I started digging a little bit more into him and, you know, obviously I'm, I'm probably not right on this, but like, he's kind of like, you know, kind of a, essentially like a closet racist, a closet sexist, um, also like, uh, like he, he says that he's like a scientist and promotes rational thinking, but he also kind of believes in God, then he believes in like mysticism. So this is also another tip. Once I meet any intellectual who's into mysticism, it's like, yo, use <laughs> your, your, your line of thinking uh, is uh, less, less legitimate, right? And so, you know, the, the big problem, and I think the reason why most people don't think so rigorously, is because, several things. We live in a society, even in America, yes, right? Where rigorous thinking, aberrant thinking, thinking differently, is not encouraged, nor is it actually tolerated. This is the big problem, right? So, 
For example, you throw any sort of politically incorrect statement out there and now it's it's becoming like very bad. It's almost a little bit like intolerable in so far much as nobody's allowed to say nothing about anything. And as a consequence, too many of the opinions are becoming too much extremized, like extremely binary. It's either you're here or you're there, you're left or you're right, you're black, or you're white. And we're starting to forget the, the nuances. The word nuance comes from like nimbus or nubia. It means cloud, I think in ancient Greek or proto-Indo-European. And the gist is, with thinking, knowledge, wisdom, there should be much more subtlety in all of our lines of thinking. Is that It cannot be a binary, it cannot be yes or no. And if you think about the philosophy of computer science too, this is where computer science is, is not good. Everything essentially is boiled down to a one or zero, right? All binary code, sooner or later, is this kind of the scrolling top to bottom, uh, one to zero. And so you think about it, if computer, uh, computer science, the code is programmed where it's either a one or a zero, then certainly it doesn't really allow for nuance or gradations in terms of uh, thinking and uh, philosophy. And this is where I, why I still believe that philosophy is the apex pursuit, the apex major, the apex you know, thing, because upon philosophy does all the other practices or majors lie upon. Um, And even when I studied sociology in school, it was actually funny because, man, this is like where the, the, the academic system is kind of bad. I, I was like really interested, I've always been interested in philosophy, like I was always philosophizing with my friends back in high school and stuff like that. And I took a philosophy class at UCLA as an undergrad, and I think it was like intro to philosophy or like a logic class. Holy mo, I'm like, yo, you're using fucking math symbols in a philosophy class? I'm like, yo, I'm Audi. That was like the worst class I ever did. And then I never thought about philosophy since until more recently. So I studied sociology, which is essentially interesting. It's like sociology is almost like applied philosophy in the real world and embodied reality because ultimately for me, I don't really care for abstract thought too much. I mean, like, I do like thoughts, abstract thoughts and ideas, but ultimately there still needs to be some sort of practical, embodied, flesh kind of role that this uh, needs to play. And so, for myself, like, I kind of like philosophy because I kind of treat it more like a game. And maybe, like, my personal life goal is, it's kind of a via negativa approach. I just want to become less ignorant about the world, and for the most part, I don't really like politics, but I'm starting to realize, I mean, if you live in a capitalist society, to better understand capitalism, one must also understand the politics of world things, and, you know, also accepting certain things, like, you know, all politicians are corrupt, yes, even Obama, right? And... And that's like kind of part of the game. And then to think that politics ain't dirty is is kind of a little fallacious. And also even thinking about like fair capitalism, I think is kind of a, a nonsensical idea too, because you know, capitalism is certainly based on exploitation of somebody, some peoples and stuff like that. Um, and so I think it's really important when it comes to uh, rigorous thinking we don't let morality and ethics solely our thinking. So certainly, I want to be a morally, ethically upright person, but that's all very subjective as well. So essentially what I'm promoting is more nuanced thinking, um, kind of reading in between the lines. Um, if you're interested in learning more, I mean, definitely read. I think all of Nassim Taleb's books are good. Uh, Karl Popper. I just go on wikiquote.org, read some of Karl Popper's notions of uh, falsification. And essentially this is kind of, and then also read some Nietzsche. Essentially it's kind of moving more towards critical thinking, more rigorous thinking, be a little bit more skeptical and suspicious of everything, but also self-experiment for yourself. Uh, take nothing at face value. You know, the, the quote is like, trust nothing of what you hear, trust half of what you see and then trust like I don't know, a quarter of what you experience or something like that is kind of my thought. Or maybe only trust what you experience. And even what you experience might be a little bit false too. So always be a little bit skeptical and sus. Don't get suckered by video footage, photo footage and try to deep, dip, deeper into the truth and always go back to the source.